Now, if you're anything like me, then you've been seeing these videos on YouTube, mostly called the seven deadly sins as YouTubers, which goes over exactly what you'd think it goes over. Stupid. And to be honest, I think these videos are kind of bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're made miles better than whatever slop I could put out right now. But they always just feel kind of random. Things like putting Nico Kato Avocado and Gluttony, even if you look at it for too long, you realize it doesn't really belong there. And trust me, I'll explain what I mean by that later, but I think that's enough fluff. Let's get right into it, starting with- I can't take this shit no more. The Urban Dictionary describes Pride as a character from Full Metal Alchemist. Oh wait, no, 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 this is wrong. The Urban Dictionary describes Pride as a sense of one's own proper dignity or value. Self-respect. Thanks for that description, cat girl lover. Anyway, the example I remember for Pride from the most popular Seven Deadly Sins video was Quantum TV. And if you don't know what he did, he used his power to put down other people because he didn't like their words. But you know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like wrath. So my pick is Wings of Redemption, because he was more or less just some fat guy who refused to do anything about his weight because he thought he was fine. He hated on other people who played Call of Duty because they were better than him. Hey, uh, whatever, I hope your family dies in automobile wreck. And wasted every opportunity he had to be better because he thought he was fine as is. And if we refer to the definition of pride, we see that Wings here had a very heightened sense of value for his own skills and he had high self-respect for his own unsuitable weight. Needless to say, he covers pride easily. Now, let's go over ah! The Urban Dictionary defines greed as good. Wait, huh? Oh, oh wait, no. This was made by Greed Works. Never mind, let's just use the actual dictionary from here on out. Greed is defined as intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power, or food. Now, hold on just a gosh darn minute. Drop the power line and we have Nico Kato Avocado perfectly. Now, it's no secret that Nico Kato is, well, chunky, or as my friend from middle school would say, pleasantly plump. Please don't ask. I'm not gonna answer. Now, you might say, But Milkman, he does mukbang. That makes him gluttony. And to that, I say you're kind of stupid, man. Because back before he did all that weird stuff with the unhealthy food and Takis, he was always doing more vegan and safe mukbangs. But he did a couple unhealthy mukbangs, and they gave him the fattest paycheck he's ever seen, and suddenly, now he's a bowling ball. Now, I know that still kind of sounds like gluttony, but you gotta understand, he did it for a paycheck, not because he enjoyed eating. Well, he definitely did because he enjoyed eating, but the paycheck was more important. So, I don't think he really fits into gluttony because, sure, he ate a lot, but he did it to have the most money possible. He threw his body away for a paycheck. That's what I consider greed. Anyways, next up we have Rat. I don't buy this game. And the game award goes to Elden Ring. The dictionary defines wrath as extreme anger. So, uh, it's a short and sweet definition, I guess. Anyways, I'm sure that even if you, I'm sure if you know Quantum TV even just a little bit, then you are well aware of his controversies. But if not, let me give you the rundown. Now let me introduce you to the Axe Man. Wikitubia, where I did most of my research for this video, refers to him as a reviewer and entertainer. But I refer to him as a guy who really likes Elden Ring. But now let's see Quantum TV. Wikitubia describes him as a tech creator, reviewer, and vlogger. But I refer to him as the guy who does not fuck with Elden Ring at all. Elden Ring. Essentially, I don't buy this game. And the game award goes to Elden Ring. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, way back in the distant year of 2022, the Ackman and Quantum TV had a whole fight over Elden Ring because the Ackman mocked Quantum TV's, well, less than stellar review of Elden Ring, and Quantum did not appreciate that one bit. So he fired back and slammed Ackman's video with a copyright strike. So Ackman, he made a video going over the copyright abuse and Quantum TV's homophobia. Elden Milkman here. I got my information from the Wikitubia page on Quantum TV's controversies, and I couldn't find where he was homophobic. The Ackman just said he had hate speech. So take that with a grain of salt. Or don't, I don't really care. Enjoy. And Quantum TV did not appreciate that one at all. So Quantum, well, he kind of got a little angry, and he called Ackman's mom. Who is this? Yo, mom. He called Ackman's video defamatory, and then threatened her. Now, I would go more in depth on that, but I don't think I really have the expertise to talk on it, and there'd be a lot of allegedly stone in there. So, more back and forth happens, and he faces no punishment, which is kind of crazy because, like, 
three months before this happened, he got into a similar controversy with a 16 year old. So I guess Quantum has plot armor or something from YouTube, but not from the law apparently, because in April of last year, he got arrested for alleged, I repeat, alleged domestic violence. I'm taking no chances here. So Quantum goes into wrath because of his abuse of copyright and his alleged abuse of his wife. Anyways, next up is Envious. <laughs> the jack o lantern <laughs> The chocolate ice. Editor Milkman again. I recorded that entire segment about Envy and Smash Bandicoot only to immediately realize that I kind of explained it really weird. So I'm going to just explain it quickly right now and why he goes into Envy. Basically, it was a couple weeks ago now. He had decided he was going. He didn't like uh, Chasington and Cartoonchi, so he decided uh, I'm not going to let them stay on YouTube. Actually, so he bitch slapped him around a couple times, and he gave him three copyright strikes each. If you didn't know, that means your your channel's kind of on the fucking death row, and you're gonna die soon if you don't prove it's false. So everyone started like yelling at him, and then everyone found out he's also openly homophobic, racist, and also he says a lot of slurs. He's also a lot of gore. Really mean guy. And um, basically, this all boils down to. He goes into envy because he was jealous of these YouTubers, so he tried to destroy their careers. Alright, thank you, bye. Now, now, hold on to your horses. Maybe even your spindle horses. Oh, brother, this guy stay- Now, you might be asking, Milkman, why is Izzy Papa in Lust instead of a sex pest or a creep? And to that, I say, because this is a lot easier to explain in one minute than someone like Wilbur. But first, the dictionary defines lust as a very strong sexual desire. Once again, short and sweet, I guess. Really sweet, I guess. But let me make my case real quick. Now, Vizipop has a lot of alleged activities, like sexual misconduct, but I think that talking about that shit isn't something I'm skilled enough at yet. So if I remake this video in the future, I'll touch on it in depth. But the main controversy I want to note is the backlash Viv received because of the Has Been Hotel music video Poison. What the f Holy shit, dude, what's the matter? What happened? What's going on? There's so much porn! So look at this! Chicks with dicks! Oh my god! Oh my god, I have a disease, alright? I need help! There are no chicks with dicks, Johnny! Only guys with tits! People online received as romanticizing abuse, which was worsened as allegedly Viv also supports some guy named R2 Ninja Turtle, who made some, well, he made some art of Angel Dust being forced into some not so epic scenarios. There's so much porn! Why am I talking like a news reporter? I hate my life. I hate your life too, dude. And apparently this drama got so big that even Kiwi Farms knew about it. Whoever that is. But aside from that actual controversy, I put Viv here because of her over-reliance on sex jokes in her TV shows. <laughs> Which I just don't like. Call me biased, but it's my list, asshole. Anyways, it's time for Glut. The dictionary defines gluttony as habitual greed or excess in eating. Now, I recognize that this is where most people would place Nico Cotto Avocado, but there's a big difference between these two roly polies. Nico Cotto Avocado eats for a paycheck and is actively aware of the effect that this level of eating is having and is actively working to stop it. Jay is openly proud and supports fat people being fat. And no, I'm not going to say plus sized. I'm fat, cheese fat, get over it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a wiki to suck dry for info, but I do have one ace card that I can use to help prove my point. So way back in 2023, our local fat activist Jay decided that airlines were discriminatory. Now, that, in my opinion, is a crazy accusation. So naturally, I thought to myself, well, why would she say that? And the answer I quickly found out was that airlines supposedly were discriminating against fat people because us fat people weren't being given two seats on a plane for comfort. She even said we are being herded like cows, which I am sure she knows a lot about considering her size. Now, I know I might be going a little harsh on Jay specifically. Editor Milkman again, I apologize in that next sentence, but I take it back. I'm not sorry at all. Stop promoting death, dickhead. And I know, I know, you're probably thinking right now, Milkman, why do you care? This is such a dumb request that I obviously didn't go through. And that, my loyal viewer, is where you are 100% wrong. Because if you book a flight on American Airlines as a fat person, 
you can kick a perfectly normal and healthy person off of a flight because you now can get a comfort seat. Or at least you could in 2023. Maybe they discontinued it because my research brought up nothing on if it's still active. But the fact that it happened at all says a lot. Now, I think if I went on about Jay in this video, it would be a lot longer than I'm willing to edit. So I'm just going to end my fat people rant there. We aren't fat by nature, we're fat by dumbassery. The editor's gonna hate this video. Ding, 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 ding! Fuck you! What's your favorite Pop-Tarts? The 2002 tie-in merch Pop-Tarts that came out for the Spider-Man movie. The dictionary defines sloth as... Actually, Google doesn't fucking know. So I'm going to call it being lazy. And that fits all podcasters perfectly. Now, am I saying podcasters can't be funny? No. Are you stupid? I'm just saying that sitting and talking doesn't require much skill. And no, formulating good questions for a guest isn't that hard either. Yes, sir. Thought about killing myself. It's a lazy career that funny people take so they can have a backup. Is that bad? No. But someone like Joey Diaz doesn't need a podcast. He might be funny as all hell, but that doesn't mean he needs it. And even worse is when people exclusively make podcasts as a main career and expect to be called funny and original influencers. Because sure, you may be funny, but you aren't original. And you're not hardworking as a podcaster. That being said, there are some good podcasters who do this as their main line of work. But even that's ruined because of people who just decide to hate on them because they're acting fake on their own podcast. Because they're putting on a character. Now, don't ask me what putting on a character means because it was to my knowledge that a big part of being in the public sphere is putting on a character. I'm putting on a character, Bill Burr puts on a character, and Joe Rogan's actually just crazy, but it's okay because he's Joe Rogan and no one tries to touch him because he might start screaming and that'll scare people. <laughs> Fucking crazy 800 pounds silverback What's bursting wrong with through people? the trees. <gasps> now, this video is kind of all over the place, I'm aware, especially with how much longer the Quantum TV segment was. That is well and truly my full thoughts on the seven deadly sins as creators. And if you disagree, then you can keep it to yourself because I don't care.